Hello friends, we are still not employed by a FANG company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do number of connected components in an undirected graph lead code problem. This is a graph theory problem as you can, you can see from the name. And this problem has been asked in one of my favorite companies, Amazon, LinkedIn, Facebook, Pinterest, Microsoft, Google, Bloomberg, Apple, Twitter. So these are all my dream companies. I want to get, get a job at any one of them and that's why I'm making these videos. So I would be paying my utmost attention. I hope you enjoy the video. So this is a lead code medium problem, but in my opinion, this should have been an easy problem. And if we look at the problem statement, we are given n nodes of a graph and we are given a, uh, an array of edges and those edges are undirected, which means if we are given an uh, edge like this, that A to B, uh, which means we can say that we can go from A to B and we can also come from B to A. Now we need to return that based on this given input, how many different of different kinds of connected component there exist inside the given graph so over here we are given an example with five nodes uh, 0 1 2 3 and 4 these are the five vertices of the, of a graph and we are given some array of edges based on these arrays uh, we are able to see that there exists these this is the graph and there exists these two different set of connected components so over here because there are two connected components we need to return to suppose we could have uh, given some example like this that 0 1 2 3 uh, so this is one connected uh, component inside the graph uh, then there is also one more node that is isolated and then there is one more node that is something like 5 6 something like this so in this case how many different connected components we can find so if we see over here the number of different connected components we can find is 1 2 and 3 so in this case we would iterate over this given input and we would say that hey there exist three separate connected components and let's see that what could be the intuition behind the solution for this one okay suppose we are given a custom example like this and always remember that it is really important to come up with your own custom example uh, in any interviews so suppose we are given a custom example like this where the number of nodes we are given is eight and uh, these are list of edges that we are given now based on these edges we are able to form a graph like this and we can imagine that there exists a graph like this now over here if we just look at it we can understand that there exist uh, three separate components that are connected with each other inside this given graph and in in this case the answer is going to be 3 and we need to return that now the idea is that first of all based on this given input we will need to find a way to iterate over this given graph now to iterating over this given graph can be a little bit tricky and the best way to do it in any computer language is to use adjacency list or adjacency matrix so you can we can use either one of them so in this case we are going to use adjacency list usually we use adjacency ma matrix when the number of edges are far more than the number of nodes and we don't have any clear indication that that would always be the case in this scenario so it's better to go with adjacency list now once we have our adjacency list it becomes easier for us to iterate over these given nodes right so we have solved a part of problem but the other part of problem is that we need to find that how many number of connected components there exist now in order to do it uh, basically we need to find a way to keep track of whatever the nodes we have visited so far and uh, the best way to do is is to create a hash set so suppose we create a hash set and uh, we keep track of all the visited nodes that we have we have visited so far now the approach we are going to use is that initially we are going to start at the 0th position. Now from the 0th position we are going to run a DFS in this case. And then why DFS? Because the DFS has a very particular property that it starts iterating from one element and it will continue to iterate till it can reach all the subsequent elements or all the subsequent neighbors of this initial uh, uh, element. So we are not going to stop up until then and uh, how we are going to use visited hash set is let me show it to you so essentially we will start our uh, function with the zeroth position we are first of all going to check that whether the node we are currently visiting is it uh, present in our visited hash set or not so zero is not present right which means we will have to add zero over here so we add zero over here now uh, and at the same time we are starting our dfs function from the zeroth position so we are going to have a variable called counter and initially this counter is going to be initialized at zero but now since we have started our dfs function so we are going to initialize our counter at as one 
now uh, from this uh, zeroth position we are going to see that okay it has a neighbor one so we will check that whether one exists in the visited hash set or not it does not exist so we will add one over here so now this one has been visited and then uh, we have we see that one has a neighbor two so again we will uh, come back at two and uh, two has not been visited so we will add the value two over here now uh, all the nodes in in this case have been visited that zero has been visited one has been visited and two has been visited which means we don't have any more nodes to go to so we will just end our loop over here and now uh, in our adjacency list because we have already uh, checked this zero one and two nodes so we won't be doing anything for them because they have already been visited now we will come at this node number three now again this node uh, we are at this node number three and this has not been visited and this is a new starting for the dfs function so every time we do that we are going to uh, increment our counter function so now the value of counter is going to be two so we will add the count to to be two and again we are going to repeat the same process so this three has not been visited so we would we will add an entry over here called three uh, from this three it has neighbor four and five so again four and five have also not been visited so we will add an entry over here and once all of them has been visited which means that we no longer needs to iterate over these nodes because they have already been visited and their count has been accounted for and because they were connected so we only need to in increase counter once when we start the dfs function we do not want to increase the counter for all the nodes that are present and once that is done so these all nodes are taken care of now we are at node number six so again we start the dfs function from the scratch so we will have to increase our counter so we are going to going to increase our counter to uh, value number three and now we are going to add the values to hash set inside our hash set we are going to add value number six so we are done with this one and now we visit value number seven as well and we are done with this one so now essentially we in the in our visited set we have visited all the number of nodes that were originally given as part of input and uh, at the end of this we simply need to return whatever the value of counter function we have found so in this case the counter we have found is three and this would be our answer answer So first of all we are going to create a variable counter and we are going to initialize it to value 0 and now we will initialize an array called visited and I know that I mentioned that we are going to use a hash set but we can also use an array as well and uh, initially we are going to initialize this array with the size n. Uh, the reason we are not using hash set is because uh, it was causing some issues with uh, in Java by passing by reference and passing by value. So I'll try to probably work upon that uh, separately. And now we will create an adjacency list and we are going to store uh, all the nodes and edges inside our adjacency list. We will run two for loops, one to add all the nodes and one to add uh, all the edges. And now we are going to iterate over every single node and we are going to check that whether that node has been visited or not if not we are going to initialize uh, we are going to call basically our dfs function and we are going to increase the counter as well and when this for loop ends essentially we only need to return whatever the counter we uh, whatever the result of counter variable we got okay now let's create our dfs function so first of all we are going to mark the current node as uh, 1 so we know that we have already visited this node and now we are going to run a for loop for all the neighbors of this particular node and we are going to call the dfs function again recursively and notice that we are only calling dfs function for all the nodes that we haven't visited and uh, this should be it let's try to run our code okay seems like our solution seems like our solution is working after a bunch of different uh, compilation errors let's try to submit this code we have some solution seems to be working as expected and uh, I will be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there.